Hi, and we're on page right now 641, and we're going to work on sketching functions in intercept form. Now, we just spent a couple days, we, we spent two days on how to graph um, quadratics and what you're going to learn is called standard form. Standard form, remember, is something like this. Um, standard form, and you'll learn this in the next section, standard form of quadratics is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the form that we were sketching in the last three days of class. All right, let's quickly just review that process. Remember, to sketch a quadratic in standard form, which is this, we would use negative b over 2a, find the axis of symmetry, and sketch it. We would then find the vertex. Since x equals negative 3, we would plug in negative 3 for x, and we'd find out that we have positive 9 minus 18, which is negative 9, plus 8, which is negative 1, and there's my vertex, negative 3, negative 1. We would sketch that, and then we would notice that, wait a minute, my y-intercept is 8. Y-intercept's 8, which means 0, 8 is one of the points on my graph, and since 0, 8 is one of the points on my graph, I can mirror that point over here, which is 3 from 0 to negative 3 is 3 away. If I go 3 more left, I'm at negative 6, negative 8, and I'd have my sketch, and of course, this would have a minimum value of negative 3, all right? Now, when you graph in intercept form, which is what we're going to talk about today, I'll just do a quick run-through of what that's like. First of all, intercept form is when you have it factored. So if I factor x squared plus 6x plus 8, remember, what times what's 8 and adds it to 6, it would be 4 and 2. This is factored form. This is intercept form. All right, the way you graph an intercept form is you ask yourself, what can I do to make my first, my first um, binomial equal to zero. Well, if you plug in negative four for x, that's going to create zero. So that would give me the point negative four for x, zero for y. At the same time, if I plug in a negative two here, I'd get zero for y. I would then graph those two points. Now you might ask, well, why didn't I get those two points if this is the exact same problem as before, just a different form? Why didn't I get the same two points? Actually, you did. You just didn't label them. There's negative 2, 0, and negative 4, 0. You can see them there. All right? Um, next, my axis of symmetry. These two points are mirror images of each other, which means the mirror must go right in between negative 4 and negative 2. To find, to find the middle point between negative 4 and negative 2, you just average them out. If you average out negative 4 and negative 2, that means you add them up and divide by 2, you get negative 3. There's my axis of symmetry. To find the vertex, remember the vertex is right on the axis of symmetry. If I take negative 3 and I plug it in for x, it will tell me the value for y. So negative 3 plus 4 is 1, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. My vertex my vertex, remember then, must be negative 3, negative 1, just like it was on my last slide, because this is the same graph. So I'll plot that point, and then I'll just draw this going up because my lead coefficient's 1. It's the exact same graph, it's just that it was sketched in a different way, or I, I had different points utilized because I had a different form of equation. So you can see I'm getting the same graph either way. I just had a couple different points labeled. By the way, I don't want to forget, this graph still has that same minimum of negative 1. All right? So, sketching quadratics in what we call intercept form then. Let's walk through that. Let's go through some specifics. I'm on page 641. What is intercept form? Intercept form means what we've already talked about. It's factored form. It looks like, generally speaking, y equals some number. We have two binomials, x minus a number and x minus a number. These are my binomials, two of them. In other words, it's just taking standard form. You will learn in the next section that this is called a standard form quadratic and factoring it. How do you sketch a graph in intercept form? Okay, we just went through an example prior. We'll do some more here. To sketch it, let's get a couple basics down here first of what all these things mean. Okay. It's easy to do, this just makes sure we go through what A, P, and Q stand for in 
intercept form. All right. P and Q are the x-intercepts. I showed you that in our prior example. Okay. This number I had to have that's negative four. If I plug in negative four, I get zero. So the x-intercept was negative four, which I showed you here. I plug in a negative two in for this, then I can see that uh, I get zero again. All right, which is why I have negative two zero. Those are my intercepts. P and Q are my intercepts for x. All right, so that's important to understand that too. Next. The axis of symmetry is right in between P and Q because P and the intercepts must be mere images of each other. That's what axis of symmetry means. So the axis of symmetry is always what P and Q average out to. It's in between. A just tells me what A always tells me. Does the parabola open up or down? Is it stretched or shrunk and so on? Okay, just like normal. So I think I got all that. In today's assignment, they're going to ask you, or I will ask you to do the following when you sketch. You're going to label the vertex. You're going to identify the two intercepts, label the axis symmetry. I should have wrote down two here also. Identify the maximum or the minimum. Okay, like we always do. That's an automatic. All right, those are the things that we should always do. Label the vertex, label the axis symmetry, identify two x-intercepts, identify the max and min. Okay, let's do an example. Here's a problem in intercept form. Now, you might wonder, you know, because I started the video off, I did the same problem twice, didn't I? I did it in standard form, and I did it in intercept form. And you might wonder, why do I need to know both? Well, here's the answer. Look on page 642 and look at problems number 1 through 9. Page 642, 1 to 9. Do you notice on page 642, 1 through 9, all, all those problems are already in intercept form. So if you know how to graph an intercept form, we don't have to double distribute this all out to get it into standard form to graph it like we did in section 10.2. If you understand intercept form, you can just immediately sketch it. So I, I should be saying sketch, not graph, because we're not going to actually take out graph paper and we'll sketch it. Let's sketch this one. So to sketch it, remember we got a couple things here. First of all, when you sketch it, let me erase this out so you can see that better. Remember, intercept form looks like this. Remember, I would plug in 6 here to make that 0. So my 1x intercept is 6, 0. And I would have to plug in a negative 2 here to make this 0. So that's my second intercept. So you can see I sketched both those. Negative 2, 0, 6, 0. The axis of symmetry has to be in between 6 and negative 2. So if I want to average out 6 and negative 2, I add them up and I divide by 2. That's 2. There's my axis of symmetry right at 2. My vertex has to be on the axis of symmetry. So my vertex, remember, it's got to be the point 2 something. Just take 2 and plug it in for x to find the something. Negative 4 here, positive 4 here. The opposite of negative 4 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. The vertex must be 2, 16. And I go to that down here again, too. So my vertex is 2, 16. Can you see this opening down? It should. Do you notice here? Negative, opening down. So all I got to do is sketch that now, and there it is. It's in phase negative. It should open down. By the way, this has a maximum, remember, of 16. Okay? I just sketched a graph in intercept form. Okay? What if the equation is not in intercept form or it's not already prefactored? Like what we worked on, this is, you know, if it... it if it was not in intercept form, we worked on standard form equations in 10.1 and 10.2. If it's not in intercept form, you could graph them the way we did in 10.1 and 10.2. You could just do it the way you learned prior. You don't have to put it in factored form. You could just do what you did in 10.1 or 10.2. However, if you'd like, you could factor them and graph them in intercept form also, and I'd be fine with that. Like, if you look at this problem. 
I could do this problem in two ways. I could do it like we did in 10 2, which would have been to take x equals negative b over 2a, get the axis of symmetry, find the vertex, and remember, here's my y-intercept right there. That would give me one point. I could mirror that point. Okay? Or I could factor this real quick, divide everything by 2. I know 5 times 3 is 15 and 5 plus 3 is 8. Factor the equation first. And now, do you notice, this is in intercept form. Let's graph it now. If it's in intercept form, First of all, my intercepts have to be negative 5 and negative 3, because if I plug in a negative 5 here, I get 0, and if I plug in negative 3 here, I get 0. So there's my intercepts. The axis of symmetry has to be right in between. It's at negative 4. My vertex has to be on the axis of symmetry, remember. So if the axis of symmetry is negative 4, if I put a negative 4 in for x in each, negative 4 here and negative 4 here, like I'm showing you right here, I'm going to end up with negative 2, so my vertex must be negative 4, negative 2. 4 left, 2 down. This parabola looks like it's opening up. That's good news. It should be because you see how I have a positive value there. It should be opening up. There's my sketch. My minimum value on this is at negative 2. Okay? It's pretty simple stuff. I wanted to go through one more problem with you. Let me erase this. I wanted to specifically go through number three because this one, every year I have people asking questions about this because uh, there's a little something different about it than the other problems. Um, first of all, in number three, the function is y equals y plus 9 squared. All right? Which means just y equals y plus 9, y plus 9. So, first of all, if I plug in a negative 9 here, I get 0. So, there's one x-intercept. But if I plug in negative 9 here, I get 0 also. Okay? So, I'm really getting the same point twice. So, now, let me go ahead and graph that, or at least start my sketch. I've got to go to the point negative 9, 0, but I just do it twice, so it's the same point. Okay? Let's average these two out. Negative 9 plus negative 9 divided by 2 is negative 9. The axis of symmetry is right here also. Think about this for a minute. The axis of symmetry, the parabola touches the axis of symmetry at what special point? I hope you're coming up with it touches it at the vertex. This point has to be the vertex. That means that's, where the, that's the parabola in this case. You see how this should open up? The, this must be the low point of the parabola right here. So I already know my minimum must be 0. I have to get two other points. Getting two other points isn't very hard. Just let's x equals 0. You know my parabola is going to open up. It's going to eventually touch the x-axis somewhere, right? I misspoke. The y-axis, I meant to say. My apologies. Y-axis. It's got to touch the y-axis somewhere. And that when x equals 0, this, this is the point 0 something, right? To find out what that point is, just go ahead and plug in a 0 here, because x is 0. Uh, 9 times 9 is 81, times 1 is 81. This must be the point 0, 81. I can mirror that point way over here. Now remember, this is 0, and this is at negative 9. So this is 9 apart. So if I'm 9 apart from here, I should be 9 apart to here. This must be the point negative 18, 81. There's two other points on my parabola. So I've followed all the directions I gave you at the beginning. Okay? Get your x-intercept. Write the axis of symmetry. List two other points I did. Label the minimum or maximum value. Okay? I'm going to stop the video there. We will go over questions you have about sketching graphs in intercept form in class tomorrow.